folks, today I'd like to have a chat about the creative process and hopefully provide you with some really helpful tips in the way that you can take inspirational images and things that you find online on Pinterest or on Google Images and actually use them as inspiration rather than just copying them and turning in them into something completely new. So without further ado, let's switch over to the computer. Okay, so let's start with Pinterest, my favourite place for finding images, whether that be sort of vintage inspiration or other contemporary illustrators, all sorts of things. Honestly, anything in the world I think you can find almost on, on Pinterest. So I'm a huge fan of this. Other resources that you could use would be a Google image search or old fashioned books. Um, I'm definitely a big advocate of reading your bookshelves, going to the library, finding images in, in paper form, because a lot of that stuff is stuff that either would be quite hard to find online easily. And um, th there's also stuff that you won't be able to find online uh, because not everything has been catalogued yet. So that's a great place to look for this kind of stuff as well. But I'm just going to go through my process with uh, with Pinterest as an example, because it's one of my go to places, especially if I'm out and about or on the go. It's a wonderful resource. So I had the, the title Flesh Eating Trees of the World. This was for my Harry Potter series. So that's literally all I had to go on was just the title. So I had to either come up with something out of thin air, which is generally not the way that the artistic process works. I don't think many people can just, you know, snap their fingers and have something arrive in, in their brain. So I went hunting for some ideas and this is where I came to. So this is my pin board here for vintage book design. So what I did is I went through and looked for books and titles that were that could be considered similar or had some sort of relation to trees the flesh eating bit I wasn't quite sure how I was going to deal with but um we started with trees that was that was the easiest spot so we have this one here which is the way of the woods open that up okay you've got some trees there quite nice uh, quite a dark illustration with golden typography there so that was one idea. Um, let's see. Go through. There's this one here as well, which also has trees. And this got me thinking about Art Nouveau Star Wars illustration and the sorts of either book covers or illustrations where you have trees on either side, sort of framing the, the composition. So that's not actually what's happening here, but that's what it reminded me of. Um so that was a useful one there as well. Let's have a look through. You're also looking for different ways of doing the typography. So, I mean, you've got this here. This is quite a um, an elaborate uh, drop cap for the F. And the F here also looks a bit like a tree. These are like the tree roots. And so I like that that's echoing it with, with the tree in the background, rather nice. And what else have we got? I quite like this one, although I'm not sure how I would have incorporated that in. But maybe the text, that would be another thing to look at. Um, and the colours are rather nice. And you've got kind of these, these animals which could look a little bit sinister, maybe. And suddenly with a title like Flesh Eating Trees of the World, you, you're thinking along sinister lines. There's also this one here, Too Curious. It's a bit creepy. I like that. It goes quite nicely with that idea. Another one that I looked at was this one because you've got both a tree and flesh because you've got this woman sort of... She almost looks as though she's a part of the tree. So that's something that sort of got my brain thinking. How can I integrate this imagery of flesh and humanity with the, the natural forms of a tree? So those are the sorts of things I was looking at. Again, this one here got me thinking back to that idea of a a quite uh, central composition with 
and, and quite symmetrical with the trees on either side. Again, that's that's not what this is at all, but it got me thinking along those lines. Um, and you've got examples like this, which are very symmetrical with the type in the middle. So maybe type like this might work quite well. Uh, but if I'm going for a, an Art Nouveau look, which I was for this, then I wanted to maybe have some Art Nouveau style type I'm trying to remember if I actually found the Art Nouveau type here this here is quite similar to what I went with um, you've also got this one here it's got a similar vibe but something that you'll notice with Art Nouveau type or at least some examples of it have um, quite a, a high center line so it, it, the type so if you were drawing an A then the crossbar like here would be a bit higher than the middle. So this this is quite high, but it's not as high as, as some of the sort of elongated letter forms that you see in Art Nouveau typography, which are rather nice. So that's sort of where I started. And then what I would do from there is go in and um, with a, a pencil and a bit of paper and start sketching out some different forms. Um, so I started out with something that actually looked kind of similar to this in terms of the the composition, except the trees instead of columns. Then just as I worked, I started looking at that negative space and the relationship between the the flesh and the and the trees and sort of thought, how can I use these shapes and could I could I make the negative space into body parts basically? Um, which is what it ended up being. So get a bit of an idea of the kinds of things that I was looking for within my um, my reference material there. I, I was looking for any references to trees and then beyond that you, you, you start sort of branching out, um, excuse the pun, to different different elements and it's sort of the, the more stuff that you look at the more connections you can make. So if you're really familiar with different time periods in in art and design, um, which I would highly recommend you do. I, I think that that's one of the most important things you can do as a designer is to educate yourself in the history of the medium that you're working in. Um, and that's always going to be an ongoing process. I mean, I do not claim to be an expert on book design and the history of book design, but it's definitely something that I am continuously looking at. The more different things you look at, the more things that you can start connecting to and that's what design is it, it's all about making those connections between different visual ideas and sometimes between words and ideas because sometimes you do literally just have words so for me this was flesh eating trees with the trees of the world that there was no author name I didn't have a book to go and read and reference so I was just working off of this and seeing how I could make that type and that image work together um so Let's have a look at a different example. We're going to do a bit more Googling in this one, I think. So this is for uh, what, what I'm doing at the moment, which is Inktober. And I will link my video where I sort of talk about what I'm doing for Inktober and give some tips as well on, on doing the challenge. Um, I'll link that in the description. So this was for day three and basically what I'm doing for these is I'm making book plates. So they're stickers or, or stamps that you can put in the front of your books, which say this book belongs to Holly Dunn or whoever. Um, often instead of this book belongs to, they'd have Ex Libris, which means from the library of, or, or something like property of. So it's, it's variations on that. Um, and all of these are based on book characters. So, the one for day three, I had the character of Marjorie Tyrell from A Song of Ice and Fire or A Game of Thrones. Uh, and she's one of my favorite characters from the series. Uh, she's quite sadly underrepresented in the books, but she's a lot more fleshed out in the show, which was super cool. And that's something that I really love about the show. So Marjorie's house is Tyrell and their sigil is a rose. So I was thinking, okay, how can I use roses without being too 
overtly rosy. I, I did think of just having a rose with the type going around the outside, which w would have worked. It would have been fine. But I wanted to do something a little bit more in depth. Um, so she marries a man called Renly Baratheon in the series and his house sigil is a stag. And she later is widowed and marries somebody else from the same house. So she has this connection to the house Baratheon. So I wanted to also include a staghorn somehow. And what I actually looked at is I went Marjorie Tyrell, not dress pattern, Marjorie Tyrell crown. And in the show, this is what her crown looks like one of her crowns. It's rather lovely. A simple design but integrating the two elements there. So I thought that was rather nice but I didn't want to copy that directly or take too strongly from from that. So then I started thinking okay so roses. What can I do with roses? And one of my favourite artists or designers who deals with roses is Charles Rennie Mackintosh, who was a Scottish designer. And my dad being Scottish, we tend to have a fair bit of Charles Rennie Mackintosh stuff around. So Charles Rennie Mackintosh, if we just go to his page here, that'll give us, there we are, this fella. So as you see, something that comes up an awful lot in his work are these roses and they're very stylized roses um, there's an example there but you can tell, still tell that they are roses um, so that's something that I wanted to integrate but I didn't just want to use Rennie Mac Macintosh style roses because that's it's kind of too overt really so I wanted to integrate some different ideas so I actually went back to the vintage book covers page here so notice I'm looking at the book covers rather than book plates, which is something that I would advise you do as well, is look in different places for um, for inspiration, maybe places that other people wouldn't necessarily look. So this is one that I looked at here. And this is a nice integration of text and image again. And I thought, actually, this is something that I could use. I didn't want to fit um, a, a bird or a figure in there. But I thought that this is something that I could use with a sort of Charles Rennie Macintosh style design in it. And the other thing you'll notice, this is the the typeface or the kind of lettering that is associated with Charles Rennie Macintosh. So that's something that I also wanted to throw in there to really refer back to back to my source. So the end result actually ended up being this composition with roses through it with Marjorie's name and Ex Libris. So in the end, it was Westeros meets Walter Crane meets Charles Rennie Macintosh. So we've got three different inspirations there. And finally, I might just go through some of these different, um, different covers here and look at how we might integrate different parts of them into different designs. It's kind of difficult when you don't have a specific idea in mind, but this is this is how I kind of think when I'm looking through things like this. Um, so I will look at the different letter forms, something like this. Really interesting. Um, the dynamic between the different letters is quite odd, quite bizarre, um, but I do really like it. And these little cutouts, of, of bits of the type as well. Very cool. So that's something to think about. Um, another thing that's kind of challenging sometimes is finding the right way of uh, having the in-between words like of and the. So I like the way that this is done here in this design where you've got the, the, these smaller words actually physically smaller than the other ones and they're in italic. So they kind of fit nicely between the sandwich between the two larger words. So that would be something to look at. And then to tie that together, you've got the the descender here, which is echoing the F. It's quite nice. And your designs are always going to look 
more cohesive if you can do things like that if you can bring in so say you're you're designing some type or doing some lettering which is to go with a pre-existing image my recommendation would be to look at the forms and the shapes within that image and see if you can find anything that you can integrate into the type because that will make the whole thing look more cohesive so for example here you have this angle this sloping angle over over this side which echoes nicely the slope of the y and the f um, and then you've got the upright trees here which echo the the upright letter forms here um so even just in this one example you're, you're seeing ways that that the type and the image are sort of working together and if we look at a designer like Mucha. Uh, so this guy really was the the master of doing this. So there's a good example of this. A lot of his work would have typography in it as well because he did a lot of advertising stuff. And circles are obviously a very strong theme here and different types of curves, which you'll see echoed throughout. So let's just use this one here as an example. You've got the round circle. I mean, circles are generally round. You've got the, the large circle here, but then you've also got smaller circles, but they all work within the circular form and they repeat throughout the design. Uh, let's see. I mean, this is just an absolute gold mine of inspiration. Oh, here we are. So it's not with type, but you've got this form of the hair, which loops down. And then you've also got that same form in the drapery. So it's exactly the same principle. If you can do that with your type, maybe you'd have a W or a U that has that kind of shape to it. Then that's going to give it a much more cohesive look. Let's have a look at this one. So as you can see, lots of very organic, rounded, um, slightly imperfect typography. So a lot of this actually breaks the, the rules of typography. There are certain, certain guidelines that you'd want to stick to if you're starting out in hand lettering. Um, things like where, where the thicks and thins of the lines go. And these actually break some of those rules. But it really works because of the way it integrates with the, the image and because it gives that really organic look to it. You've got, again, very rounded shapes here and in here and down here as well. And that's something that you see within the text. These E's and the C, very round, very organic. Uh, likewise, with the M, you've got that more oval shape which kind of nicely echoes this shape here. And it just all integrates so nicely. And you've got the same thing down here. And the C kind of echoes that, that nice curve that you've got there. I mean, it's just absolutely masterful. So <laughs> this is the thing. Study the masters if, if you want to really improve and see what of their work you really love and what really speaks to you. It's, um, yeah, you, you can't go past it. And there's a reason that there was, or there used to be back in Renaissance times, that there used to be a kind of apprenticeship model for, for artistry, where apprentices would learn from, from masters. And with the internet, you have a whole world of masters at your hand, at your fingertips, that they're right there. And you can find these images and you can deconstruct them and you can take from them. You can steal the things that you think are most relevant to your own work. And it's it's a wonderful, wonderful thing. It's um, we, we live in an amazing time. So if you're not making the most of that, then um, you know, you're missing out. Yeah, that, those are my tips on how to kind of integrate integrate text and, and image and also how to look at inspiration and take elements from it that you can that you can use in your own work i hope that this has been really helpful um these are the kinds of things that i've picked up along along the way 
um, some things that I've had to figure out for myself. But hopefully me imparting this to you will hopefully improve your own work, um, particularly if you're just starting out. I found that this kind of process was really helpful for doing my last 30 day challenge and I'm also using it in this next 30 day challenge which is the the book plates for Inktober 31 days even uh, I hope that you've enjoyed this if you want to find me elsewhere online I am at Holly Dunn Design on Instagram and Twitter and my website is hollydundesign.com if you'd like to check out my work as always thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one bye Thank you.